The biggest record deals in rap history. Hip hop has come a long way, starting on the streets of New York through DJing, graffiti, and breakdancing, evolving into America's most popular genre of music today. With that rise in popularity came the money. Previously low key and unknown rappers and producers were catapulted into the stratosphere in terms of mainstream popularity, and many were able to turn their talents into cold hard cash. That's the American dream. As the genre has gotten more and more popular, so too has the amount of money flowing through it. Industry Industry executives scramble to find the next big hit and are willing to dish out some serious dough to be able to own it. While some artists have responded to this by remaining independent, thereby controlling their art, others saw too many dollar signs and could not resist. And who are we to blame? Here are nine of the biggest record deals in rap history. Before we start the video, make sure you click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Number 9, Chief Keef. Chief Keef burst onto the rap scene in the early 2010s, releasing a couple of mixtapes in 2011 that garnered some hype in his native Chicago. His hit song, I Don't Like, became a mainstay in the Chicago party scene and caught the attention of one of rap's biggest superstars and fellow Chicagoan Kanye West. He remixed the song, giving Pusha T, Judah Kiss, and Big Sean verses. And just like that, Chief Keef's notoriety went through the roof. All of this hype led to Chief Keef being the target of a bidding war amongst several labels. Throughout 2012, labels scrambled to get him to sign with them, and the numbers were reaching the millions. Eventually, Chief Keef would sign to Interscope Records for a $6 million contract. He was also awarded another $500,000 to establish his own imprint on the label, Glory Boys Entertainment. $6.5 million just like that. Chief Keef was only 16 years old and already a multi-millionaire. Sadly, the success with Interscope Records would not last long. Despite the relative success of his Interscope projects, Chief Keef was dropped from the label only two years after signing on. Many things contributed to his release. He was missing video shoots as well as getting into trouble with the law. Chief Keef would continue to make his own music and still tours to this day. We don't know exactly how much money he missed out on, but one thing is for sure, we still love Sosa. Number 8, Lil Pump. Much like Chief Keef, Lil Pump saw his success at a young age. At 16 years old, he burst into the SoundCloud music scene and quickly inked a deal with Warner Brothers Records to release his debut self-titled album. Oddly enough, the contract he signed for this record was voided due to Lil Pump being underage at the time of signing. This didn't stop him from signing with them again, however, in 2018. Lil Pump, now 17 years old, signed another contract with Warner Brothers Records, this being one worth a whopping $8 million. He went on to clarified that the contract was for one album only, bringing in a hefty haul for just one project. The Gucci Gang star was also able to secure a fraction of the royalties from his music as well, giving him a steady revenue beyond the advance. As far as business finessing goes, Lil Pump is pretty savvy, even though he didn't actually go to Harvard. Number 7, XXX Tentacion. The story of XXX Tentacion's success is well documented and one of the most controversial and meteoric come ups of the 2010s. He burst onto the scene with his aggressive, yelling style rap aided by his friends, Ski Mask, the Slump God. The noisy, nihilistic rap found a place on the SoundCloud music scene, and his songs started generating some serious buzz. He self released a pair of albums that only had fans and labels clamoring for more. After his tragic death in the summer of 2018, it came to light that he had some serious money moves in the works. He was reportedly slated to sign with Empire Records for $10 million. It was a tragic end for the controversial rapper. We can only wonder what else we missed out on from his promising career. Rest in peace, X. Number 6, Gucci Mane. Everybody loves Gucci Mane. And if there's one thing we know about him, it's that he's all about the paper. Fresh from a stint in prison in 2016, Gucci Mane was back to releasing music the day he got out. He quickly released a number of records that would prove to be hits. Good Drank with Two Chains and I Get the Bag featuring Migos would prove that he was still a commercially viable rapper. His high point came from a collaboration with Ray Shremard on their chart topping hit Black Beatles. He was also back on his money moves, writing the success of these collabs, he released three albums and two mixtapes, before announcing in 2017 that he'd extended his record deal with Atlantic Records for another $10 million. All in all, it was a pretty sweet deal for the Atlanta rapper, who was already worth millions of dollars prior to his signing. He wasn't lying when he said, I'm way richer than when I got out three years ago. 
Number 5, 6 9 Takashi 6 9 is another highly controversial rapper, but the hype train was at new levels following the release of his hit single, Gummo. This led to him inking a deal worth $7.5 million with 10K Projects, an independent label based in Los Angeles. All of this, of course, came crashing down when 6 9 was indicted and put on trial for a number of crimes in one of the most publicized trials in recent hip-hop history. He was able to snake his way out of some charges by snitching on his associates, which led to his sentence being reduced. Even so, he became the laughing stock of the internet and was clowned relentlessly for his snitching. 6 9 was headed to prison, and it seemed like that was the end of that. But like a mighty phoenix, Takeshi 6 9 rose from the ashes of his disgrace I let my nuts hang, blood. and proved that he still has a buzz. While awaiting sentencing and still in prison, he was able to ink another deal, again with 10k projects. This time, it was worth $10 million for two albums, one of which will purportedly be recorded in Spanish. It's unclear when 6 9 will be able to fulfill the contract, considering his prison sentence, but it looks like he's got a good life waiting for him for whenever he gets out. He's going to need a lot of security though. Number 4, Tyga. Tyga hit a wall in the mid 210s. His music was becoming oversaturated, and people weren't flocking to his shows like they used to. It was a pretty classic career slump. However, he turned his fortunes around with one of the biggest comebacks of 2018, releasing hit after hit and proving he still got it. From taste featuring offsets to Swish, songs which have a combined 1 billion views on YouTube, he was able to prove in 2018 that he still could have commercial success. Writing the success of these songs, Tyga was able to secure a deal with Columbia Records in 2019. The exact amount in the contract is disputed, but some sources are claiming that it's worth upwards of $40 million. Pretty mind-boggling, right? If my comeback is as good as that, I'll consider myself a lucky guy. Either way, we know he's making a lot of money, with him recently purchasing a half a million dollar chain. Number 3. Birdman. The infamous Birdman of Cash Money Records held enormous control over his artists, which he was able to leverage into lots and lots of cash. He built his empire from the ground up, releasing work by a variety of southern rappers in the 1990s. This would lead to Birdman securing a distribution contract with Universal Music Group in 1998. The contract was worth a whopping $100 million, and Birdman was an overnight millionaire. Lots of Cash Money artists would reference 100 mil in their songs in reference to the deal Birdman signed. But those who fly the highest, fall the hardest. And Birdman's exploitation of the artist on his label would result in several lawsuits that would destroy his wealth. Lil Wayne's highly publicized legal battle with Birdman would reveal that Birdman spent $70 million worth of the advance on himself, when it was supposed to fund things like video shoots, promotion, studio time, etc. Lil Wayne feels that he is entitled to some of that money, and rightfully so. His music propelled cash money to the upper echelon of the rap game. Even so, it's hard to imagine blowing through $70 million like that. In any case, what goes around, comes around. And Birdman is learning that the hard way now. Number 2, Jay-Z. Jay-Z became hip-hop's first billionaire in the 2010s, and it isn't hard to tell why. His business savvy and smart investments have allowed his money to grow his capital exponentially. However, it was his deal with Live Nation that would give him a good chunk of his wealth. Back in 2008, Jay-Z signed to Live Nation for a truly ridiculous ridiculous $150 million deal. Of course, not all that money was for musical output. $30 million were used as advances for three future Jay-Z albums, and the rest of the deal was for concert performances, certain publishing rights, and $25 million was given to AJZ in his investments. It's pretty crazy, right? It remains one of the biggest deals Jay-Z has ever made, and cemented his status as a true hip-hop mogul. No wonder he mentions Live Nation so much in his music. Number 1, Lil Wayne. So back to Birdman. Despite his poor treatment of his artists, he did help shape Lil Wayne into the rapper he would become. Before the legal battles and public drama, back in 2012, things were looking pretty great for Lil Wayne and Birdman. The success of his The Carter series and all of his mixtapes had sent him into the stratosphere and he had never been so popular. For all his extraction of Lil Wayne's skills, Birdman was quick to return the favor. Lil Wayne would ink a contract extension with Cash Money Records in 2012 for $150 million. It was a truly lucrative deal, one that seemed too good to be true. And it probably was, considering the ensuing legal battles that would dominate the 2010s for Lil Wayne and Cash Money Records. Oh well, it seemed like a good idea at the time anyway. Who knows how much Lil Wayne actually saw out of that reported 150 mil. You can never say when it comes to Birdman. 
So were any of these record deals surprising? Do you think it's a bad idea to sign a record label? Let me know in the comment section and before you leave don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel.